Welcome back to Physical Chemistry on Catalyst University. My name is Kevin Tokoff. Please make sure to like this video and subscribe to my channel for future videos and notifications. So in the previous video, we did one example problem, kind of two problems together, but where we used the principle of corresponding states to calculate the compression factor and the density of two different gases. And these two gases actually behave similarly because these quantities right here, the reduced temperature and reduced pressure, uh, 1.1 and 2 respectively for propane, were the same as those for ammonia down here. And so because they have exactly the same reduced temperature and the same reduced pressure, they behave similarly. Then we use those values and this graph to determine the compression factor. Again, go back to that video if you want more detail on that. And then we could use the compression factor and some of this data up here to calculate the density. So this kind of problem you would have if you knew, for example, the temperature, the pressure, the critical temperature, the critical pressure for at least one gas. All right. Now we're going to do a problem where we know it for one gas, but we have an unknown gas, which we're going to call gas X, not the medication, of course. And we, what we want to do is determine the temperature and pressure at which gas X would behave as propane would. And so this is going to be a principle of corresponding states problem. And remember that if gas X is to behave as propane would, meaning let's say have the same compression factor and so forth, it would have to have exactly the same reduced uh, variables. So it would have to have a reduced temperature of 1.1 and it would have to have a reduced pressure of 2.0. Okay, so we're gonna say propane has a temperature of 406.8 Kelvin. Again, I just stole these numbers off the previous slide. The pressure is 8.5 megapascals. And again, we would have to know the critical variables, but the critical temperature is 369.8 Kelvin and the critical pressure is 4.25 megapascals. Again, these critical variables are something that you could look up in a table. They might be in your physical chem textbook or your professor would have to give you them. Now gas X, we don't know the temperature and pressure. We're trying to find the temperature and pressure at which gas X would behave as propane would. Okay, But we do know the critical temperature and pressure of, of this particular gas. Uh, gas X has a critical temperature of 405.4 Kelvin and a critical pressure of 11.333 megapascals. All right. So in order for gas X to behave as propane would, according to the principle of corresponding states, Gas X would have to also have a reduced temperature of 1.1, and it would also have to have a reduced pressure of 2.0. Now again, I'm going to remind you that uh, we don't need to actually calculate the reduced molar volume, the third one of these, because since we're specifying two of them, it automatically specifies the third because all those variables are contained within the same equation of state. So the molar volume is automatically specified by these. Okay. So if we want gas X to have a critical temperature. So if we want gas X to have a reduced temperature of 1.1, then we need to set the reduced temperature equal to 1.1. So here I have the reduced temperature 1.1 has to equal the temperature divided by the critical temperature, which is given as 405.4 Kelvin. And from here, we just solve for this temperature. That becomes easy. The temperature is equal to 1.1 times 405.4 Kelvin. And multiplying these, the temperature would be 40, uh, 445.9 Kelvin. So what we're saying is that at 445.9 Kelvin, assuming they have the same reduced pressure, at this temperature, gas X would behave the same as propane. Okay, Because Think about this, if you took the 445.9 Kelvin and then divided it by 405.4 Kelvin, you'd get 1.1, giving this the same reduced pressure as propane. All right. Now to really make sure that they would behave the same, it would also have to have a reduced pressure of 2.0. So I'm going to do the same thing here. Remember, reduced pressure would be pressure over the critical pressure. So I'm going to set the, uh, the reduced pressure equal to 2.0 because it has to be the same. So that's going to be pressure over the critical pressure given as 11.333 megapascals. So I multiply this up to the other side. And so the pressure at which I would get a reduced pressure of 2 would be 2.0 times 11.333 megapascals. And this you might be able to do in your head. The pressure that gives me the same reduced pressure as that of propane would be 22.666 megapascals.
All right. So again, if we were to take this 22.666 megapascals and then plug it back in here and divide by 11.333 megapascals, we would get two, giving us the same reduced pressure as propane. And so what we can say now is, now that we've set them to have the same reduced temperature and pressure, we can say that gas X, if I put it at a temperature of 445.9 Kelvin and a pressure of 22.666 megapascals, then that gas X will behave the same as propane. Okay, And again, we could go to this graph. We don't need to in this problem. We could go to the reduced pressure of 2 up to the 1.1 reduced temperature isotherm, and we could calculate, or at least I should say interpolate, the compression factor of this gas. Okay, But this is how you would solve a problem uh, if you wanted to determine the temperature and pressure at which a particular gas would behave the same as a gas for which you already know everything. So the key is you would have to have one gas at least where you know everything. In this case that's propane. I know it's experimentally determined temperature and pressure and I know it's critical temperature and critical pressure. And then for the other gas which I'm trying to mimic the propane, I don't know the temperature and pressure which is fine but I would still need to know the critical temperature and the critical pressure. Okay, And you just solve it like this. So hopefully this video made sense and gave you another, um, another type of problem. So hopefully this problem made sense. Please make sure to like this video and subscribe to my channel for future videos and notifications. Thank you very much.